<laughs> hey, congratulations on getting job at company. Welcome to the workforce, where you'll be spending up to a third of your life. Many of you were shown a training video just like this one, telling you about how to prevent serious crimes like shoplifting or the dangers of unions. All unions work at is taking a cut out of my pay. <laughs> but all these videos are designed to make your boss's life easier and your life harder. So we made the training video you actually need to see. This year, millions of Americans have been taking matters into their own hands and demanding better conditions. Our video will help you stand up to your boss, make the money you deserve, and generally make the workplace a better place. Welcome to the classroom for more Perfect Union. First, let's talk about one of the biggest crimes in America today, wage theft. When an employer doesn't pay an employee what they owe, it's called wage theft. Your labor has value, and when you provide your labor without getting paid for it, you are literally being stolen from. Hey man, have you seen my $15 billion? What? No, 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 go back to work. Go back to work. Wage thieves stole at least $15 billion from the American worker in 2020 alone. Significantly more than what burglars got away with. But wage theft isn't actually that obvious. You could be a victim and not even realize it. Let's see if it applies to you. Have you ever been paid less than minimum wage? Or worked more than 40 hours a week without getting paid overtime? What about being told to work off the clock or outside your normal hours? Maybe your boss likes to tell you that on time is late, early is on time. Did you not get paid for time you spent doing work mandated activities like training or security screening or getting a COVID test? Or maybe you were asked to file as an independent contractor, even though it certainly seems like you do the same work as the regular employees you're working with. That's just a short list of possible wage theft violations. There are many more ways employers can and do steal your money. For more examples of wage theft, we turn to a very important web resource everyone should know about, the anti-work subreddit. We found hundreds of instances of wage theft across industries and types of jobs. The Fair Labor Standards Act grants you the right to overtime pay. That means when you're forced to work more than 40 hours a week, you should be paid time and a half your regular rate. The idea is to make sure you get paid extra when you work extra and to prevent overwork. Many employers don't do this, hoping workers won't notice. If you get paid a salary, you might think worrying about getting overtime paid doesn't apply to you. But lots of salaried workers are supposed to get overtime and don't. If you were told you have a white collar exemption for an office job, that only applies if you make more than $684 a week and if you have very specific job duties. Otherwise, you're probably owed overtime. Wage theft can also be stealing tips. If you make a tipped minimum wage and don't personally receive every dime of tips you're given, your employer is stealing from you. The people doing the stealing are doing incredibly well for themselves. In 2018, 10 of the top 12 most egregious wage theft violators made over a billion dollars in profit. But hope is not lost. More than 500 U.S. companies paid $8 billion for claims about wage theft since the year 2000. Wells Fargo, 24-Hour Fitness, Oracle, and Smart and & Final. And then there's Crazy Buffet. Employees there have filed 18 different wage complaints against the restaurant and courts ruled in their favor in 17 cases, awarding the workers a total of a half million dollars. Vigilant employees can help catch wage thieves in the act and get paid what they're owed. Only you can stop wage theft. Learn to identify it and if it's happening to you. Now you might be thinking, I don't want to sue my company or report them to a labor agency. They're like a family to me. At least that's what they keep telling me. Okay, this is so wrong. I I'm reporting you. You can't report me. We're family. Yeah, but we're not actually family. No. no. We are. Uh, fun fact! Your company is not your family. They might say they are in emails and other messaging, but that's because they're trying to manipulate you. Harvard Business Review studies show that cultivating a family atmosphere leads to increased loyalty and motivation. But the research also shows that overly loyal people are more likely to participate in unethical acts to keep their jobs and are more likely to be exploited by their employer. Workers in a family-like atmosphere take fewer sick days, work more unpaid overtime, and are less likely to report managerial misconduct, which is exactly why your employer pushes it so hard. So now that you know your boss isn't your dad, what can you do when they do something wrong?
There are a few groups you can go to or create yourself when your employer is stealing from you or trying to force you to commit crimes. In 1970, the United States government created OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. This agency enforces two rights, your right to a safe workplace and your right to call it out when it's unsafe, also known as whistleblowing, and it works. In June of 2020, managers at Houston Crane Rental Company, Crane Masters Inc. ordered a driver to come to work after they had worked a 19 hour day the day before with no time off. That's not only unfair to the employee, it's unsafe for everyone else around and illegal. Drivers federally have legal limits on how long they can drive without rest. When the employee refused to take on the unsafe and illegal hours, they were fired. That's called retaliation and it's illegal. So in November of 2021, Crane Masters was ordered to pay the employee nearly $24,000 in lost wages, interest, and damages. And that is just one of thousands of cases over the years. There's someone else on your side too, your fellow coworkers. You should talk to them and consider forming a union. A union is a group of employees acting as one in negotiations with their employer, their collective power more significant than any individual member. Kind of like the Beatles of making sure you don't get screwed over by your boss. But your boss doesn't want you to unionize, so who's making sure they let you? This boring office is home to the NLRB, the National Labor Relations Board. That's the independent federal agency in charge of protecting workers' rights to organize and unionize. You can't be fired or disciplined for union activities. Once again, that's called retaliation, and it's still illegal. When a company tries to stop unions from forming, it's called union busting. Some forms of it are, shockingly, totally legal, like these anti-union videos. But some union busting efforts are illegal under current labor law. Like when Tesla CEO Elon Musk tweeted this. It was actually against the law. That message could discourage or scare workers from organizing, which is completely illegal. When a complaint was filed about unfair labor practices, the NLRB stepped in and ordered Elon Musk to take down the tweet. Employers legally can't intimidate or surveil their unionizing employees either, but they sure do. The Economic Policy Institute found in 2019 that employers are charged with violating federal law in 41.5% of all union election campaigns. And those are just the ones who got caught and charged. Not an easy process. The violations include coercion, threats, unjust firings, and otherwise retaliating against unionizing employees. The NLRB also protects your right to discuss your salary with your colleagues, no matter what your employer says. Okay, so those are just some of your rights. But remember, the rules are stacked in your boss's favor. Almost everywhere in America, your employment can be terminated at will without cause. Your boss relies on this fear to maintain power, so always be careful when exercising these rights. These protections cover most workers in America, but there may be exceptions. In addition, your state or local government might grant you even more rights, but they can't take away the ones that are federally available to you. So, if you have a question or think you're being mistreated at work, first look up your rights to find out more and make sure you're empowered with the knowledge you need. You could start with the Department of Labor, the NLRB, or your state's labor enforcement agency. You shouldn't rely entirely on these agencies, but you do have leverage right now. During this great resignation, as millions of workers demand better from their employers, be it by unionizing or straight up quitting, the time is right for you to demand better. Read your employee handbook, exercise your power, and if all else fails, you might just need to join millions of other Americans and quit for a better job. You can make your workplace a better place and get paid what you're owed, but it all starts with you. So talk to your coworkers, organize, and remember all workers are in this together. Your boss and HR might not be your family, but your fellow workers are. No, we, we are, not, not us. Thank you for joining us in The Classroom, a series by More Perfect Union. We're taking on right-wing propaganda and telling the stories that corporate-backed media ignores while seeking out solutions for a better future for all Americans. So join us, like, and subscribe.